I believe that people who are truly in relationship with God, yet for various reasons, don't fully express their destiny and their scroll of their life doesn't match up with their scroll of destiny, end up engaging with the judgment seat of Christ and the fire of God's eyes purifies their scroll of wood, hay and straw or stubble and accentuates the gold, silver and precious stones. The lake of fire in context is Gehenna um, and Gehenna was a literal rubbish dump outside Jerusalem. So it's not actually a place where people are going to go. Um, now, obviously, there are things that you can draw from the lake of fire and if you if you read into it you look at that it's still the presence of god even within that setting but contextually i don't think the lake of fire has anything to do with the end of the world or where the devil and angels end up either because the devil there uh, diabolos is is not capital letter um and i think in context the angelos messengers we're really talking about those who were persecuting and accusing the early church, which would be the Jews in Jerusalem, uh, therefore the high priest and the Pharisees and others. So that's really what I think in context the Lake of Fire is talking about. But in terms of carnality, um, when you enter the realms of heaven, you engage the Father and the Father wipes away your tears and deals with your regret and your so a scroll gets purged and you then go on to enjoy a continuing relationship of un unfolding knowledge and truth and engagement as part of the cloud of witnesses. So, no, I don't believe in that. Um, I also don't believe in purgatory as such in terms of that type of thing that you're going to get. But I do believe in the judgment seat. I've been there. I've engaged my scroll front and back. With the fire of God, there was no guilt, no shame, no condemnation, just love. And dealing with the things I missed as a believer, the things that I had done in the wrong motive as a believer. And in a sense, if you're talking about behaviors that come from lost identity, which you might call sin, um, that's dealt with by Jesus on the cross. Every accusation against us is nailed to the cross. So there is no judgment against us. We're judged innocent not guilty justified made righteous so from god's perspective he doesn't see us in any way other than who he made us to be and that's when we engage with him relationally we begin to discover the reality of who we are and then we begin to be transfigured transformed metamorphosed into that by the renewal of our minds so that we know our identity um, the vast sum of his thoughts about us having that revelation you know i would encourage you to spend time with the father without an agenda as such but just wanting him to reveal the truth of who he is and the truth of who you are so that you can come into the fullness of it and then you won't have any sort of the negative thoughts about what would happen if you're not living a perfect life and everything else because perfection yeah. is different from what we think it is from our perspective it means 100 percent perfect from god's perspective it's just being who he made us to be it's not about works it's not about doing it's about being god is more interested in helping us discover who we are so that we can rest in who we are rather than striving and stressing over whether we're doing good enough or whether we're doing well enough or whether we miss the mark or whether we've attained to the right measure love is unconditional it's free forgiveness is unconditional it's free we just have to accept that freedom um religion will always get us tied to works um, trying to earn something that already belongs to us because we're children of god and our dad loves us the more you get closer to the heart of god the more you'll find how deep his love goes and then the freer you'll become from any guilt shame condemnation any negative thoughts any performance orientated thinking so that you can truly rest in who you are and enjoy life you know jesus said his joy would be in us so our joy would be full he's left his peace with us so that's beyond human understanding so we can live in that depth of peace and of course he's loved us 
unconditionally so we can love him and others because we love because he first loved us love one another as i have loved you so the key is let him love you let him love on you let him reveal his love to you in a deeper and deeper way so that you can truly experience what it is to be free the truth that you know will set you free and that's not intellectual knowledge that's personal experience when you experience the truth and that truth is jesus who encapsulates the fullness of truth then you'll come into the revelation which will truly renew your mind so that you can fully be who god always intended you to be and you can enjoy life filled with joy rejoicing always having fun god wants us to have abundant life you know, it's not just life without end that's fullness of life the quality of life now of abundance overflow having more than enough from all our needs and an abundance for every good deed and everything of who we are. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.